Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's tackle the problem where we're seeing heat being transferred from one place to another across a conducting pad that does not have a constant cross-sectional area that starts out being wide and ends up being narrow. How do we calculate the amount of heat being transferred per unit time? Now we know that dQ dt will be a constant, but what will it be? How do we figure that out? Now the conducting pad is a basically a truncated cone a, circular, a truncated circular cone. It starts out with a radius of 10 centimeters on the left side here and a radius of 2 centimeters on the right side. The cross-sectional area is going to be pi r squared, r of course varying from left to right. Let's say that the distance here, the length is 0.8 meters, so x on the left side is 0 and on the right side would be 0 0.8. The Conductivity constant, assuming that it's made out of copper, is 385 watts per meter per Kelvin. And what will be dQ dt? How do we figure that out? So the conductivity will be determined by dQ dt is equal to K times A times the difference in the temperature, delta T, divided by the length of the path L. Now here, A is going to be, of course, pi r squared, and r is now going to be a constant. So we know that dQ dt is going to be equal to K times pi r squared times delta t, the difference in the temperature, divided by the length. Now r is going to be defined by well, kind of look at this. This is kind of like a straight line. We can think of it this as being y equals mx plus b. We're going to relate that to the equation of a straight line. Assuming that this is the origin right here, where x is equal to 0, you know that the, the uh, what we call the y-intercept is going to be the height or the distance of r. So that's going to be b. So we have y is equal to some slope times x plus the point where it crosses the y-axis, which is 0.1, because it's going to be 0.1 meters, 10 centimeters. And then the slope is going to be negative slope. The slope is going to be the drop over the run, so the, the negative rise over the run. The negative rise is going to be 8 centimeters. The run is going to be 80 centimeters. So it's going to be minus 8 over 80. That's the ratio times x, or y is going to be equal to minus 0.1x plus 0.1. So now we have an equation that relates the height, which is the radius, to x. So we're going to integrate from here to here, from x equals 0 to x equals 0 0.8, and the radius is going to depend upon this, so we can replace this by r for the radius, and it's going to be minus 0.1x plus 1, and that can go into our equation right here. So dq dt is going to be equal to k times pi over l, times the quantity negative 0.1x plus 0.1 quantity squared times the difference in the temperature delta t which is a known quantity it's going to be a hundred degrees difference so next we need to set up a differential equation that we can integrate from x equals 0 to x equals a or x equals 0.8 so how do we do that well, we can think of a small little segment and assume that this can be divided up into a whole bunch of little segments where the dQ dt is the same on every one of the segments, which always is the case. So what we could do is instead of having L, we can have a small little segment dx instead of L. So we're, let's go ahead and say this is our little length segment dx. And then the temperature difference across that small little segment, let's call that a small little dt. So our equation is going to become the following. dQ dt, which is going to be a constant, is going to be equal to k pi divided by dx instead of l times the quantity minus 0.1x plus 0.1 squared times dt. And now we have two differential quantities. We have a dx and we have a dt. And I think now we're set. Now what we can do is go ahead and set up a differential equation, separate the two variables, and integrate both sides. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that as follows. So first of all, we're going to get this equation over here. We're going to write dx divided by the quantity negative 0.1x plus 0.1 squared. And then 
we're going to write on the right side, this is equal to, on the right side we have k pi, k pi, and we have divide by dq dt, because that's a constant, and times dt, like this. So now notice we have x on the left side and temperature on the right side, and now we're ready to go ahead and integrate both sides. Now we need to get this ready for integration on both sides. And the way to do that is as follows. We're going to pull out a point 1 here. And since it's squared, I need to pull out a point 0 1 because point 1 squared is point 0 1. And also, since this is squared, it doesn't matter if this is positive and this is negative or this is negative and this is positive since the denominator is squared anyway. And it's always better to have the x as a positive quantity. So we can write this as follows. We can write this as dx divided by 0 0.01 times the quantity x minus 1 because I, I, plug the, I pull out a point 1 quantity squared like this and that's equal to k pi divided by dq dt which is what we're looking for times dt and now we can go ahead and integrate both sides on the left side, we're going to integrate from 0 to 0 0.8, and on the right side, from 0 to 100. Or actually, from 100 to 0. It really doesn't matter. If we're off by negative sign, we can just go ahead and turn that around. Okay, so this is x minus 1 to the second power. This goes becomes x minus 1 like this, x minus 1 to the negative 2 power in the numerator, and then we add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So what that means is that this is 0 point, or 1 over 0 0.01 times, this will be a negative 1 over x minus 1 to the first power, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.8, and that is going to be equal to k times pi, divided by dq dt, and that's what we're looking for, times t evaluated from 0 to 100, which is basically 100. We just want the absolute value of that. Okay, so what else do we have? Now, when we plug in the upper limit or lower limit, well, let's see what we end up with here. So we have 1 over 0 0.01 times. Plug in the upper limit, you get minus 1 over 0.8 minus 1, which would be minus 0 0.2. Subtract from that, we plug in the lower limit, we get a minus 1, so that would be minus a minus 1 over minus 1. Okay, that looks good. And that equals k pi divided by dq dt times 100. Now here we end up with minus 1 divided by this, this is 5, minus 1, this is 4. So we end up with 4 over 0. 4 over 0 0.01 is equal to k pi. And k, of course, is 385 divided by dq dt times 100. So notice if we bring this over to the other side, we have 0 0.01 multiplied times 100, those two cancel. Which means when I come over here, I'm running out of board space here, and I'm moving the dq dt over, I end up with dq dt is equal to k pi divided by 4. So that would be k pi divided by 4, which is equal to k being 385, 385 times pi divided by 4, like this. And now we're ready for a calculator. If I can find it, it's right here. So we have 385 times pi divided by 4, and that gives me 302. So that means the amount of heat per unit time, dq dt, is equal to 302 joules per second, and that will be the heat transfer on a constant basis in this particular situation. We have a heat source and a heat sink. The difference is 100 degrees. The distance between them, 0.8 meters, we have a sloping, uh, we have what we call a truncated cone path for the heat to travel across that starts wide on the base, becomes very narrow at the top, and it's made out of copper with a heat conductivity of 385 watts per, per meter per Kelvin. We start with our initial equation that the amount of heat transfer is Ka delta T over L. 
The cross-sectional area is a variable. It depends on the r, the radius of that cone, that truncated cone. So we have pi r squared. And then we replace r squared by what it's equal to in terms of its position. We found the slope of that line. We used the equation y equals mx plus b to come up, to come up with a relation between x and the radius r. That gets plugged into the equation. Then we separate the variables. We have x on one side, temperature on the other side. And then we find a good way to integrate this. So we pull out a point 0.1. We make that into a plus and a minus because it's squared. We can go ahead and do that. And then we have a nice format that we can easily integrate. Once we integrate it, we calculate the heat per unit time that transfers across that. And that's how we do it when the cross-sectional area of our conducting path is not a constant. That's how it's done.